Hello everybody and welcome back to Crumbag. So the tractor and the worker here are getting on very well. We've got the horse drill which is actually rented. I couldn't afford to buy one and the one which we did own was too small so we've just basically rented one which is twice the size and it does have the capability of also putting fertilizer in at the same time which is very nice. It really does speed up the job. So it's putting in the oats in this field here and then we do have another field to do, the old canola field. I think actually it's going to be done here pretty fast. So yeah, whilst it's doing that, let me just check and see if we have any other jobs to do around the farm. I don't know if we do actually. It depends if that field there, for number one, needs to be fertilised, but I don't think it does because I've done this, I did a chop straw and then we basically did the fertiliser with the drill, I think, and yeah, that looks good. Well, I say it looks good, it looks pretty atrocious actually, but we have these strange lines because of the chop straw. So really, I think that just leaves Field number four, uh, which is a field we've never actually been in before because it is a grass field and it's just been winter time. As you can see, we do have grass. It looks a bit thin, but it is ready to cut. So I think really we should start to focus on doing something with this field, whether it is cutting it for hay or for silage. Something needs to be done. Really, silage is what we need in the pits. We, we want to clamp it. So I think that would be the best idea for today. We could also uh, do bells. But as we do have clamps, a pit, I don't know what the best way of calling them is, but I guess a pit to clamp it, um, or to produce the clamp. That's what we've got over at the cow farm, just down here. So I think we'll do that. If I just, uh, that's the manure heap. Uh, where is it? There it is. We've got uh, three bays. Wow. It's huge. So I think this is the best thing to do. So what we need to do then is get a mower. As you can see, we do actually own a mower. But there's no way I'm only going to use the one mower. I think what we'll do is we'll keep that one for the time being, for this year at least, and we'll just stick the front mower on as well. It's only £9,500. Then we can get the field cut, and then we can think about rowing it up and, yeah, picking it up. So what we need is the Matty Ferguson tractor. We'll take the baler off. The mower will be in one of the sheds, because that's where we uh, started with the machinery. Uh, they actually did spawn in the sheds. But which shed? This is a challenge. Oh no, there it is. <laughs> Not much of a challenge at all. Good. I'm looking straight at it. I don't need to take it to the store with me, but... Well, actually, if we don't pick it up first, the front mower might not fit through the doors. Probably will, but yeah, we'll just take it with us. Okay, I'll see you over at the store. Put the beacons on. And we're on our way. We still have seed bags here, which we'll have to leave and go over to the field in the future. Probably next year, though, now. We'll just take them back whenever we're here with the trailer next. Actually, yeah, going back to what I said before about it not fitting through the door, it probably wouldn't fit through the door with the front mower. It is, even when it's folded up, quite wide. Oh, yeah, my key bindings have changed for the, um... Oh, crikey. I was watching the rear mower. Didn't look at the front one. My key, my key bindings have changed for the indicators. I need to change them back. And I've also just turned off all of these AI buying um, options because it was basically buying seed and fuel as it went. And fertilizer. It was costing a fortune. So, yeah, we can change the, uh, the indicators from here. If I just quickly find them here somewhere. Where are they? Here we go. Oh, it's still set to the Hori machine. Right, that should work. Nope, okay. Okay, I, I guess I've done something wrong, or maybe you have to restart the game, possibly. Uh, oh, well, not to worry, it doesn't matter for today. Let's just get over to the field. We don't really need to do too much indicating, and I can still use the keypad, like I'm doing right now. So, um, yeah. The priority is to mow the field. Okay, how do we actually get into that field? I really don't know. Ah, that's a good start. A gate. Uh, it's quite a narrow gate. I suppose if we can get through this gate, we'll probably have got through the doors for the barn. Made to measure. Look at that. And we can fold. Yeah, I don't think we're going to get much silage out of this, but we'll get something. 
basically enough that we don't have to keep buying it. We do not want to be buying it. That is super expensive. It's hard to even see what we've cut. But no, we are cutting. Yeah, probably when we start to row it, it will look a lot better. So, yeah, we'll just get this done. It's actually a pretty decent working width. It does add up having front and rear. I would never have just had a rear. But as for windrowers and the loading wagon, I think if we don't own them, which I don't think we do, we will have to rent them for this year. But eventually, we will be buying them outright, or we'll just use the baler or something in the future, I don't know. We don't always have to use the pit, and we can actually put silage bells into the pit to store them. So, uh, yeah, just as long as we have silage in one form or another. Yeah, it's a pretty big field. And as mentioned, we could do some of this as silage and some of it as hay. We don't have to do the whole lot, but I think we probably will do 100% uh, silage this time around. Okay, there we go. So we can just switch everything off and put on the shed. Fold it up. Lift the front bar. So yeah, we're going to head back to the store in just a second to pick up a windrower. And actually, we might be able to put the windrower on the front. Depends which one I go for. And then put the forage wagon on the back. But yeah, I, I usually do go for the trailed windrower. So we might have to do two trips. Good test to see if we can actually get into the shed without <laughs> hitting the front mower on the doors. Hopefully we don't. Uh, it's pretty close. Oh, I've dropped the front mower. Actually, I, I hit the back wall with the with the rear mower. Crikey. I'm bad at this. <laughs> okay, let's see if we can go through. Yeah, we can. Oh, I've crashed into the wall again. That wall can take a beating. Right. Okay. Let's head off. Well, actually, let's just let's just check the uh, windrows on here first. Uh, there might be a modded one, um, or one which we haven't used before. They're all pretty expensive, actually. These, I, I would love to use something like that, but I haven't, that's that's eight thousand pounds to rent it. Uh, what about like even that is so expensive? Um, Four thousand eight hundred. Yeah, unfortunately, we are going to have to go with one of the ones which I always use, which I really don't want to do, but which can't afford that sort of money. Like this one, it every single time this one just stands out because it is only nineteen and a half thousand pounds, and to rent it is less than a thousand. So, yeah, money. One day we will go for the the different ones. I, I want to use the oxbow one and all that sort of stuff, but um, yeah, it's uh, it's not financially viable at this stage. Let's row. Let's go and row a meadow. Don't really know where to start. I kind of feel like we should just 
definitely match up with that tree from the top. Or maybe just go around the headland. Yeah, it's a tough one. Um, yeah, go around the headland. But all of this is going to have to be carted to the bottom, of, I think it's the bottom of the map, pretty much. Um, yeah, it won't take that long. Uh, make sure that the loading wagon we use is at least half decent in size. It should be quite big. Uh, and we'll use the fence for that. The fence might have actually finished. Let me just quickly tab to it. Yeah, it's finished. But of course, we do still have another field to drill. So, I, yeah, I don't know. Actually, i just turn off the windrow. Instead of having it just sat here, let's take it to the canola field. Yeah, I was just looking at the different crops. I think we are just going to have to put in uh, oats again in this field. I know it's a bit boring to keep doing the same thing, but it's the right time of the year for them, and, well, they will be very profitable. So, yeah, let me just put it on a worker. I hope there's no trees on the far side to really confuse it. We'll probably have to bring some more seed over to this tractor, actually. Yeah, so at this rate, we are going to have to use the Massey Ferguson to cart the... Uh, silage. Well, the grass. It, it, well, it would be considered chaff at the time. It will turn to silage once it's been clamped and fermented. But I am hoping to make some serious money from the cows on this series. We do have a fairly large cow enclosure. Very high capacity. And we actually do have another cow pasture on this, uh, uh, this farm as well. So... We'll probably utilise that at some point. But it is just an outdoor one, it's just a pasture. There's no building or anything. Right. Yeah, this is actually, although it doesn't look like it, it's actually going to be a pretty fast job. So, in just a minute, this whole field will be nicely rowed. And we'll be returning the windrower to go and swap it for a loading wagon. Right, okay, so I know for a fact that this is way too big for this tractor. Uh, it certainly has to go onto the fence, but we can take it back to the farm with this Massey Focus tractor. I'm wondering if this, uh, what is it, 54, 75, can pull the drill. I, I don't think it can. Really, we do need two tractors at least the same size as the fence, but yeah, we're just going to have to make do. Although knowing this game, it might actually be able to pull this in the field, so we'll have to see. Obviously in real life this is just an insane setup, but it might do it in FS. Right, we can almost put it into the field, that's a start, I guess. Let's just see how far the fence has progressed. Over halfway, not bad. Looks like it had a bit of an issue at the start though. Right, well, 
We'll see how we go with this. Ah. Good start. I've got it stuck on the gate. Yep. Really, really pushing the tractor to its limit. Obviously, no problem downhill. But there will be a problem uphill. When it's fully loaded, that's going to be bad because it will be so heavy, it will probably just push the tractor and it will be so dangerous on the road. But yeah, this is better than nothing. So I'll just keep it going, I think. See if we can get load number one done. And here we are, arriving at the farm with load number one. Of course, as you saw, the uh, drill ran out of seed. So, yeah, I thought we'll just take the tractor then and use it on this. But it's still finding it quite tricky. Really, we need a 300 horsepower tractor on this. All right, so which bay do we choose? <laughs> We've got a choice of three. Uh, I think we'll just go with this end one. It really doesn't matter, and I could stack bales in the others. Or we could have multiple bays going at the same time. Try and keep this fairly level. My greatest concern is it coming out too far, so I don't want to keep it near the front. I think that will do. That's perfect. Okay, let's head back for load number two. It looks like there's probably going to be three loads. Hard to say for sure. But yeah, now that we have the fence, we can just basically go and get the seed bags with the pallet fork and take them to the job. Whoops, that was a bit of an overshoot. There we go. Yeah, it's a bit of a drive. It's not terrible. You can see on the mini-map, we're going to just next to fill number 31, up to fill number 4. So, a bit of a twisty, turny drive, but it's, it's not too bad at all. So I think we'll crack on. Well, it looks like in the end we have got a little bit less than I thought. I was expecting it to go into the third load, but it looks like it is going to all squeeze into load number two, which I guess is a good thing because it means we have less driving to do. Still a really significant amount, though. It looks like it's going to be in the region of 80,000 litres, maybe a bit more. And if we were to buy 80,000 litres of silage, we would have no money for a very long time. Um, I don't know how much that would actually cost. That would probably be like £100,000 or something crazy, maybe even more. Yes, buying silage bells in this game, or in fact buying any bells in this game, is an expensive thing to be doing. So we want to be avoiding that. And there we go, there's the final piece just there. So let's get that switched off and we'll get it lifted up. 83%. Yeah, it looks like we'll end up with just over 80,000 litres, maybe 90. I'm going to have to compact the pit. After that we'll return the loading wagon and then we're going to have to pick up the bags of seed and bring them back to the drill. Yep, 
Yeah, so just two lines in the end. But we did go for a pretty big loading wagon, so it makes it much easier, especially when carting long distance. And now we need to drive backwards and forwards. We could actually return the loading wagon from here. don't know how long this is going to take. Sometimes it takes forever and sometimes it's pretty fast. It does, I think, depend on the tractor you're using. This is quite a heavy tractor with fairly decent uh, width tyres, so it looks like it's compacting pretty well. That's good. That's very good. So I'll see when it's on about 90% and it should look a lot more level, hopefully. Good. 95%. And there we go. So we can start the fermentation. 86,650 litres in total. Uh, that might be ready by the next month. Hopefully. Because we'll probably have another feed mixture to do. Um, but yeah, they should still have some food. Yeah, they do. 17,000 litres of slurry. That's good because we're going to be spreading that on the fields. And yeah, they actually do still have 47,000 litres of food, so they're taking a little while to get through it, which is good for us. Gives us time to stockpile the ingredients. So yeah, there we go. That is that done. Let's get the tractor taken back. I think I actually will just return this from here. And yeah, we'll go and grab those seed bags. I'm pretty sure this tractor can pick up two without doing a wheelie, so that'd be, be good if it can. It'd be a bit of a pain if it does a wheelie. Just put them a bit closer together. It does still have fertilizer, so we shouldn't have to do that. Yeah. There we go. Seems quite stable. Excuse me, madam. Flying seed bags coming through. Out of the way, car. <laughs> right. Oh, that is some pretty uh, bad driving, you maniac. And mine's not great either. So, of course, we can't really boom out. We don't have a, a telehandler. So, we'll just put them there. Thing is, I don't know if we're going to need both. I don't know. I suppose the hopper would be big enough for, for two bags. It's a pretty big drill. Let's just see what it takes. It would be good if it does, because then it would just get them out of the field. We'd have to detach and move them again. Yeah, it looks like it's going to take them. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. So, yeah, as I said, we've got a little bit of an issue at the top there. And we've still got this piece to do, but we'll do that next time. Then we can get things wrapped up, and then we can move on to the next month. So... Thank you so much for watching, hopefully you've enjoyed it, and until next time, see you again soon. Bye for now.